Crop mechanic suspension can be laggy, glitchy and all around difficult to work with, that is if you don't know what you're doing. So this video will take you through all the suspension designs that you will ever need in this game. At least one of the designs mentioned in this video will work for anything from a tiny starter survival car all the way up to a giant nomad base. So enough talk. Let's look at the first suspension, which is just regular suspension. Sometimes less is more, and 9 times out of 10, regular sport suspension or even off-road suspension is all you'll ever need, especially in survival where frame rate is of the essence. Now if you need more ride height then you can add a piston on top, you can do it like this or just glitch them into each other. I'll put this particular assembly on the workshop if you want to use it. Oh and pro tip, don't use level 5 pistons in creative, the lower the level the more flex it's going to have, meaning that you not only get extra ride height but also extra travel. Now if you've been playing scrap mechanic for a while you've probably experienced floppy wheel syndrome. It's where your wheels flop around because the suspension can't handle the weight or the sudden drop. Even the vehicles in the survival trailer suffer from this issue. So to fix it all you need is a connecting bar between the wheels. Here's how to build it. So first place two downwards facing pipes, then your suspension of choice, it can be off-road or sports. Then you need these three-way pipes with one of the ends pointing outwards and the other pointing forwards. Then place bearings on both the forward ones and then connect those two bearings together using a bunch of pipes. Then don't forget to weld and then place bearings on the outside where you can place your wheels. And if you want steering bearings, you can just place some angled pipes downward. And as you can see, it does in fact give you independent suspension. This won't allow the wheels to glitch outwards or inwards, keeping your ride stable while also giving you independent suspension. And this design is its brother, which not only stabilizes the suspension, but also the steering bearings. It connects the steering bearings using some steering bars, similar to how it's done in real life and it means that even under excessive load or low frame rate you'll still be able to turn somewhat. Now if you need the most versatile suspension that I know of then use this design. I've already made a tutorial for it in the past and it is quite literally the jack of all trades. This thing has adjustable ride height, adjustable travel, it can switch between gas and electric engines, it can be built with toggleable rear wheel steering and it works great with wheel wells as well. Like there's literally no reason to not build this thing. So from here there's only a few other designs that I think are worth mentioning. One of those is double wishbone. It's stable, versatile, and can be customized quite a bit. You can add camber, add a sway bar, the list goes on. However, it isn't very frame rate friendly, especially if you have more than two axles. I wouldn't recommend it in survival because of that issue and there's plenty of tutorials on YouTube for how to build it if you still want to build it and I'll link a really good one down in the description. And while you're there, feel free to like and subscribe. Anyway, the last suspension I would recommend is actually no suspension. One of the biggest reasons we even use suspension in the first place is to minimize what we call terrain bounce. Even if the terrain is supposed to be perfectly flat and smooth, it still has tiny bumps and many ramps that kick the wheels off the ground at high speeds, leading to instability in lighter creations when they don't have suspension. However, if the creation is heavy enough, suspension can actually hurt more than help. This is because the creation is so heavy that the terrain bounce can't even affect it and so the suspension just adds Adds unnecessary lag. So if your creation is big enough and laggy enough already, then adding suspension might be a bad idea. It's definitely not ideal, but it will save a significant amount of frames on the larger, more complicated creations. Now, if you've been scrolling around YouTube and the workshop for suspension designs, you might be thinking, when is this guy going to mention all the other suspension designs like cantilever, single wishbone and trophy truck style stuff and a bunch of other great designs. But here's the thing. They're all great and they probably won't disappoint but I just view them as cool design features because fundamentally they just offer lag. This isn't entirely true and there are some really revolutionary designs using glitched pistons that have unreal amounts of travel and things like the swim car but like I said they all add lag and sometimes that tiny bit of extra performance simply isn't worth it. That said, this design is actually quite good. But don't get me wrong, I love really fancy suspension setups but I love them because they're cool, not because they're practical. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please subscribe. If you didn't, please subscribe and I hope I'll see you in the next one.